Oscar, 2001. Take four. Take three, two, take one. Take one side A. Fosco 2001, take one side A. First entry, just been out to do my shopping. Cozy little Soviet apartment. Walk through the park to the metro. Birch trees and snow. Reminds me of Chekhov. Okay, take one, side A. Here we go. Sunday, the 16th of December, 2001. Um, well, I'm in Moscow, and uh, I've been here for two weeks. And this tape is to chart the various experiences and thoughts that I have while I'm here. I'm just going out to do my shopping. And uh, I'm living in Sokol, which is about three or four miles outside the centre. And uh, it's a very pleasant, cosy little flat. Nice little park to wander through to the metro. And then a couple of stops down the way is Dinama, or Dynamo as we know it. And I've just been down to the Things Market, as they call it here today, just for a wander about. And as per, made a stop at the supermarket, which is bloody miles away. Anyway, I got some food, so uh, we'll see how it goes. Hopefully I'll have something a bit more inspirational to say <laughs> the next time. <laughs> the next time I talk. The children of Stalin. Strong. Strong. Ah, the Pelmeni incident. Yanigavaru Baruski warned to avoid the police. Yeah. Wild dogs on the street. A lot of wild dogs. It's snowing like I've never seen it snow. This one, 270. I'm staggering back and it's like 11 o'clock in the morning and outside it's snowing, it's snowing like I've never seen it snow before. And it's just, it's just full, the air is thick, white with this stuff and it blows in your eyes and up your nose and everywhere and the sun is blotted out by this mist of snow. I'm drunk, I've been out um, since five o'clock yesterday afternoon, so that's about uh, 15 hours and it's been a really good night, a really fun good night. And we went to, I started off for the English first party. We were there and we went drinking vodka and dancing and I was late, I wasn't dancing. I was drinking and eating and talking and Sergei was drunk and it was lovely. And then we went to the Irish bar which was crazy, this tiny little Irish bar and they're singing karaoke tunes so badly, so cheesily. And I walk in and I'm grabbed by some random Russian woman who whirls me around and dances with me and pulls my hat off my head and then I just drink some there but I stay quite sober and then and go off to meet uh, Tony at the casino and the casino he fucking works at is the man of the casino jeez the Shangri fucking laugh it is amazing it's just like two hundred dollars to get in all that la di da we meet him his mate Mark we go to a bar the last drop then we go to the hungry duck the eponymous hungry duck full of women and I meet a 
a Russian girl who's just got back from Thailand and she was over there doing a sex show and she was gorgeous and she liked me, I think. Oh, fuck it, I like her, we talked, blah, 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 then we... Guidebook to Moscow, 2001. I want to read you the introduction. Published 2001. Moscow is all things to all people. The city is huge, surreal, and apocalyptic. After a few weeks here, the bizarre becomes normal, and you realize that life is, as Russians say, bespredel. Bespredel. Nali? Da. Without limits. Traditionally, Moscow has been a place for strangers, like me, to throw themselves into debauchery. Good times. Leaving poorer and wiser. And with the fall of communism, it has reverted to its lusty, violent ways. It has reverted to its lusty, violent ways. Take one side B. Stari Novi Got. Old New Year, yeah? The mad fireworks display in Red Square. They have a fireworks display in Red Square. And the great thing about the fireworks display in Red Square is everybody brings their own fireworks. It's not organized. Everybody brings rockets and bangers and whatever fireworks they can buy on the way down to uh, Red Square along Tverskaya. There's all these stalls. You can buy as many fireworks as you want. Everybody cramps together in the middle of Red Square. And when, when the clock chimes 12, everybody launches their own fireworks. It is absolute chaos. Uh, quite dangerous as well, I expect. Soldiers on the street. No legs. Went to meet the English girls. Went to meet the English girls. Anyway, so story number got decided I've got to go out and celebrate Old New Year. Didn't quite know what to do, and so I ended up going to meet uh, the girls that I'd met the week before, as in Melissa and Sarah, uh, the young punk, and Matt, uh, the camp punk, skateboarding, uh, non-drinking, smoking, ex-Christian. Uh, so we all go out, and uh, as a bit of a fuck-up, I ended up going to see a film called K-Pax about Kevin Spacey claiming he comes from another planet. I got there too early, so I went and watched that. Met them in between the two films. Then we went to see Zoolander. It was really fucking funny. I thought it was going to be shit, but I was surprised. It was brilliant. Uh, and then we went out to a bar in uh, Kuznetsky, Kuznetsky Most, uh, which is next to the infamous Hungry Duck, where all the girls dance on the bar and uh, take their clothes off and writhe around each other for bottles of champagne, which is always fun to watch. Anyway, we didn't go there. Um, so we go into this place with a vodka, it's 20 rubles a shot, which is fucking great. And we sit down, me and Sarah and Angie, who is Sarah and Matt's flatmate, who is a crazy little dangerous pretty girl from Manchester. Um, Great. And we sit down, me and Sarah and Angie, who is Sarah and Matt's flatmate, 
who is a crazy little dangerous pretty girl from Manchester. Great night out with Matt and Angie. Mad little Angie, she's a good laugh. 31 today. 31. 22 years ago. 31 today, I played pool. I played pool with Matt and um, Angela. Mad little Angela. Valentine's night. Angela visits with her dirty washing. This. Take two. So, uh, this is uh, testing, testing, one, two, three, yeah, uh, this is uh, February 14th, uh, uh, two, 2002, and uh, got uh, Angela Chanka <laughs> here today, Privet, yeah, she just said Privet, yeah. yeah, and she's going to uh, Gavarit of uh, Oshin Haroshi at Tavoya Spectaculo. Uh, of Minya. <laughs> Pravda. Well, my art, it's a my art. And about Po. 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 Uh, and uh, talk about it. She's like, yes, yeah, take your time. She's buying the time. Because you have to wait for pure genius. We're still, we're still waiting. Still wait, pure genius. Still wait, pure genius. Where does genius? Where does genius accumulate? Where does your genius accumulate? Where does your genius accumulate? My genius. My genius lives deep, deep, deep within me. Part that you cannot see. Was, was your genius exposed by my genius? You know the thing that I did in like, with the wheel and the trolley and you without the arms and legs? That exposed your genius. It's Valentine's night. Valentine's night. Valentine's night. Valentine's night. Angela has come over. Angela has come over to yes, so with her yes, dirty clothes, oh, to wash yes, her dirty yes, clothes. Because I've got a, um, yeah, I've got a washing machine, I've got a washing machine, and um, not everybody's got a washing machine in Moscow, mm -hmm. not in 2001. Oh, so she comes over, she brings her dirty washing, and right. um, what, what is, what she doesn't know it, but I've left, a, um, I've left a rose on her door earlier in the day. Mm. I, um, I'm not in love with Angela, okay? You've got to realise I'm not in love with Angela, but I did. I did leave a rose outside her door, because I could have left the rose there, or could I not left the rose there? So I, I left the rose there, and she called me back about two hours later, and... She's here. She's here with me now in my old Soviet apartment. She's brought her dirty washing. We bought a bottle of vodka and we've started to drink the vodka. And the nice thing about vodka, the nice thing about vodka, when you drink it like the Russians drink it, you drink it pure, you drink it neat, you don't water it down. It has a very, very, very nice effect on you. So, me and Angela start drinking the vodka. And as me and Angela talk, as me and Angela drink the vodka, it is as if doors open to other universes. There are manifestations, there are characters that appear in the apartment with us. There's, um, there's Michael. He lives under the bed. But don't get too close because he will suck your soul under if you do. Then there's John. He's the technical manager. I don't know why we need a technical manager, but we've got one in the big old Soviet wardrobe. And best of all, we've got Mustafa. Mustafa is a magic milkshake maker from Morocco. If anybody wants a milkshake, just give Mustafa a shot. He makes the best milkshakes ever. Oh, by the way, he's not really from Morocco. That's just a kind of a marketing thing to get all the M's, you know, with milkshake. 
Anyway, all of these people are in the apartment with us and the vodka and the dirty washing and we talk, we talk about normal things as well. Me and Angela, we talk about, uh, we talk about life, we talk about ourselves. Angela tells me that she's, she tells me she's bisexual. Okay? And she tells me about her bisexual adventures, which is fine. We end up having sex in the kitchen together. Don't worry about Mustafa, we get him to go in the wardrobe with John. The sex is, the sex is, the sex is, the sex is, is frantic. It's scratchy, we're reaching for something that maybe isn't there, I don't know. The sex is, the sex is okay. Did you know that the dogs take the metro in Moscow? The wild dogs, the street dogs. You can be on the metro and a dog will come onto the metro, sit down on the seat next to you, travel a few stops, and then get off again. Talk to Angela on the phone for an hour. She's 19 years old. She's from Manchester. This is never going anywhere. <laughs> she must be completely temporary. She must be completely temporary. and he pisses on my bed. Then he shat on the floor. I kicked him out the next day. Take three. Angela's mantras. 
you are as strong as you choose to be. If you are afraid of anything, do it. Listening to the mamas and papas in the bath together. Feeling out of control. Needed to go out on my own. Uh, okay, so this is the third tape and it's coming on for the end of March, so I've been here just over three and a half months, nearly four months. And the last month has been the biggest blur and the biggest blowout and the biggest buzz and the highest and the lowest and the most all over the place month that I've had here so far. And so what have we been doing? So. There was that Friday, okay? You go back a week and a half now. It was Friday night and I needed, I needed to get out on my own because I was feeling out of control of the situation with Angela. And I knew that I was falling in love with her and I needed to go So, we go out. And I go out, I end up meeting Angela. I see Angela for a little while, I see Angela for a few drinks, but, but not too many because I want to be on my own. I want to go out on my own. Probably because of the aforementioned emotional situation. So we go out. I go out to Propaganda. It's a nice club in Moscow. They're here in Moscow. And we sit down. I don't want to go to Moscow now, but they're here in Moscow, you know. Go to Propaganda. I go to Propaganda and I drink. I drink a few vodkas and the next thing I know, I'm, I'm on the dance floor. And I'm dancing with two gorgeous Russian girls. Like, the girls in Moscow are just... So I'm on my own, I'm dancing with two gorgeous Russian girls, and I'm, I'm having a good time, you know? And um, all of a sudden, they turn around, and there's, there's another girl. There's a girl dancing over there, sort of dancing with me, but this girl, she's got, uh, she's got a really big head, and she's got big hair, and she's got big square glasses, and she looks a bit like... Thelma from Scooby-Doo, you know? And, and for some reason I start, I start dancing with this girl. I'm dancing with this girl, the, the Thelma girl from Scooby-Doo, and I'm not dancing with the two gorgeous Russian girls behind me. And, and what am I doing? I feel obliged to dance with this, this big girl. So, no, okay, I take the time out. I, uh, <laughs> I go to the toilet. And uh, I go to the men's toilet, obviously, because I'm a man. I go to the guy's toilet, and um, there's a guy, there's a man in the toilet with me in the man's toilet, because it's the man's toilet. That's what happens. And then all of a sudden, I have an idea. You know, Angela's bisexual. She told me she's bisexual. She said to me, she said, "Why don't you try it? What are you afraid of?" And I think, "All right, all right, Angela. I will prove to you that I'm not afraid of doing this." So, I go up to this guy, and I say to him, "Can I kiss you?" And he says, no, I'm not gay. Yes, I'm not gay. And I say, that's okay. I'm not gay either. That's okay. And I lean in. Oh, I don't want to decide just there. And I feel, oh my God, you know what? I feel fantastic. I feel great. Not because of the kiss. I mean, the kiss wasn't anything special. But because I just did something that I was terrified of doing. I just did something I've been terrified of doing all my life. I go back into the club. There's Thelma. I carry on dancing with Thelma until she says, do you want to come home with me? I'm like, okay, yeah, okay. I'll go home with Thelma from Scooby-Doo. We'll probably go in the Magical Mystery Tour. Who knows? So, I end up in her car and we're driving back. All of a sudden we stop. The car stops at some traffic lights. And I'm sitting in the back of the car, and I realise that there's Thelma buy me drinks, with her boyfriend the end of the in the front of the car. I'm going home with Thelma and her boyfriend. The fucking Thelma. I run out of the back of the car the because it's just too much too soon. Magical <laughs> mystery van or whatever it's called. I stagger back so to my apartment. I stagger out with her. I sleep. 
Not long, just a few hours. Well. And I, realize that I wake up in the morning, and the first thing that I do is I call Angela. I, mean, I, I am... I don't know where the fuck we're going or what. I am burning to see Angela. I am burning to talk to Angela. I am dying to tell Angela what I did last night. So I call her. I tell her what I did. I tell her about the guy that I kissed in the toilet. And I think, I think she's going to be really proud of me. But the line goes quiet. Paul, can we meet in Red Square? She says. Of course, yeah, 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 of course, of course we can meet in Red Square. So, I grab my, uh, I grab some juice, I grab some bananas for breakfast. I'm only wearing my sandals, but that's okay. I end up in Red Square in my sandals with a bunch of bananas and, 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 a, and a carton of apple juice. Then there's Angela. Now, I don't know how this happens. I don't know she if appears she told before me, that she me and I am. Um, or if I talk about I, what happened last I'm, night before, I'm I shocked do, because I she's, she's not night. happy. Oh, she's I am not, I am completely she's angry with me. She's she's jealous because no. I kissed the guy in the toilet no, and no, I can't. I, think I, was. I, I can't I actually believe that. And a part of me just feels, kind of that just feels great that she feels yeah. jealous. <laughs> so we, we talk about this no. and, and she explains to me in no uncertain terms that maybe, just maybe, we need to have a non-casual based relationship. Okay, 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 a non-casual based relationship. So like a serious relationship, yeah? So like boyfriend, girlfriend. Yes, this is the best news ever. This is all I could ever wish for. We are spinning and spinning and spinning underneath a blue sky in sandals in Red Square. The next thing, the juice goes over my head. The bananas go over Angela's head. We're having a food fight in the middle of Red Square. All of a sudden, we are drenched and covered in bananas. We look like a couple of junkies as we get onto the metro. And then, I don't know why, I don't know why we do these things, we start singing these stupid songs, like, just made up. I am me, you are you, we are, we are, we are, we. I am me, you are you, we are, we are, we are, we. I am me, you are you, we are, we are, we are, we. Money, we got off the passengers, we buy imaginary drugs, and we do them on the metro. But we take too many. We overdose. Don't worry! Don't worry, everybody! We're getting off the metro! Dosvidanya! Paka! Her jealousy. We go home. Her twang of For a couple of hours. I told her to calm down. Last night. That night. I am. We're going out with our friends. There's a new club. There's a new club open. So we're going to go out with our friends. And tonight, tonight will be the first night that we go out as boyfriend and girlfriend. Yeah? Non-casual based relationship. Serious relationship. So we turn up at the real McCoy's. It's, um, it's a bootlegger's bar. The vodka is on special offer. Very, 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 very cheap. So we're drinking lots of vodka. The boys are drinking, the girls are drinking, the boys are bouncing, the girls are bouncing. It is a great party, I tell you. I'm thinking this. Do you know what? When I stand there at the bar, this has got to stop because I know that that's what it is. And I watch Angela at the same time move on the dance floor. Oh my god, there is something about the way that she uses her body. She is so free. Like every little impulse, so everything she wants to do, her body just to does it. Be with and she moves each other like a poet across the dance floor. Yeah. And the way she dances with other people, she's dancing with. I know, I'm poor and great food That's Tanya. Tanya's a gorgeous little Russian girl. Dreadlocks. In fact, I think Angela did her dreadlocks. In fact, I think Angela maybe mentioned once that there was some kind of thing between them. And as they move, as they move together, as they dance together, as you see this incredible, 
this incredible connection, this incredible chemistry. This is like, oh my God, this is terrible. Right, Angela, I need to talk to you, okay? We go in a toilet cubicle and I explain to Angela the situation. Look, Angela, you can dance with whoever you want, okay? That is totally cool and I love, I love the way you dance. But do you remember what happened today? Like non-casual based relationship, yeah? So I know there is this kind of thing, there's a connection between you and Tanya, but look, please, just, just, just remember who, what's happening between us, yeah? Okay, cool, fine. Speech done. And as we leave the toilet cubicle, the toilet cubicle next to us opens, and Tanya steps out and looks us both straight in the eyes. I go back to the bar, I'm just going to wait here, have a drink, and then we can all go home. We go to... Uh, I haven't seen Angela for about half an hour. It's getting light outside, and the club is closing. The lights have come on. I know where she is. Angela! Angela, can you come out now? Angela! The club is closing now! Tanya! Tanya, can you bring Angela out, please? She's my girlfriend! Tanya brings Angela out of the toilet cubicle and she is, yeah, she's, she's a mess, but at the same time, I need to, I'm responsible for her, I need to take her home. All of a sudden, Angela's flatmates arrive and between Tanya and her flatmates, they decide that she should go and sleep at Tanya's apartment. No, 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 look, please, you have got to understand, Angela. Please tell them what happened today. Tell them what is happening between us. We are, we are together. Somehow I managed to convince them that Angela should come home with me. So we stagger out of the club and I am so relieved. I mean, so angry, but so relieved to get her out. It's six o'clock in the morning. So we head for the Metro. Unfortunately, we don't get to the Metro. We fall on a little piece of grass and, uh, about 10 metres away from the metro. <laughs> with we were not having a fight. We were not having sex. So the accusations made by the police are completely made up and false. Two police officers arrive in a police larder. They come over and they put us in the back of the car. Which is fine, okay? Until I'm 31 years old. This is the first time I've ever been arrested in my life. I've been a good boy. So we're sitting in the back of the car, we're sitting in the back of the police car, and we're driving to, I mean, I presume the police station, they're going to put us in the cell or something. Uh, but no, they do not take us to the police station. They take us to, they take us to this kind of uh, laboratory, this kind of clinic. We step into this place and it is, it is pure white. It is bright white. And there is a very, very old and serious babushka on one side, and an even older and more serious babushka on the other side. And they are all in white. They make me blow into some kind of breathalyzer. I guess to test how drunk I am. And then, this is the best bit. There's a line that runs down the middle of the clinic. They tell us, you have to put your hands behind your back and walk the line. Walk it. One step at a time. <laughs> you have to concentrate very hard. You have to make sure you stay within the parameters set by the line. And if you do as they say, if you manage to do what they want you to do, if you keep your focus and your discipline, you make it to the end. Next it was Angela's turn. Angela zigzags down the line 
fighting, and drops in a heap at the end of it. Sex. She was lying comatose. The next thing, the they put us back in the police larder, and this time, exactly they do take us to the cells. The police report said we were having sex behind the metro, and that's not true, because we were definitely in front of the metro, doing what? I honestly can't remember. Anyway, I'm 31 years old. Tonight, for the first time in my life, I've kissed a guy, I've been arrested, I've been sent to a bruise clinic in Russia, and I'm now locked up behind bars. But I feel, I feel full of everything that was, that was never inside me, because I know that next door, Angela! Angela's in the cell next door. The girl that means everything to me is in the cell next door. Angela! Are you okay? Yeah, 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 I'm okay, I'm okay. I love you! Get some rest, I'll see you in the morning. I'm locked inside. Four walls. The most confined space I've ever been in. But inside, Oh my God, I am free. I am free and I am burning and I have never felt better in my life. Scratch our names in the ring. I guess I'm sweet. I'm woken up by the sound of keys and iron opening up. The policemen have come through and it sounds like it's Angela's flatmates that have come to the police station to pick her up. I'm dying to see what's going on when all of a sudden they carry Angela past my cell. She is... Oh my God. She is white. She is... Is she even fucking breathing? She looks pale. She is pale as paper. If they have done anything to her, if they have touched her, I will... And then all of a sudden she opens her eyes. And she beams at me. And she reaches her hand to me and I try to... I stick my hand through the arms of the bars. And I try to reach her. I can't reach her. I can't reach her with my physical body, but I can. With everything else, with my spiritual body, I reach her. And I don't... I don't know... I don't know what the hell is going on, I don't know what the hell this is, I don't know what this is that is happening, but... 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 So good, we are so concerned now. Now, this... Our friends tell us we need to slow down. Maybe. We do not slow down. We pour soup over our heads in cafes. We stage fights in restaurants. We start shoplifting in charity shops. One day, we stand on the bridge over the Moscow River and we contemplate jumping in together. We are Bonnie and Clyde. We are natural born killers. We are out of control. But through all this, through this mythology that we were writing day by day, there's a, there's a nagging doubt that I have. Because I know, I know exactly how I feel about her. Oh my God, I know how I feel about her. But sometimes I don't know how she feels about me. Take four.
I wonder what is going to happen. I wonder what's going to happen. I mean, it's just, it doesn't it doesn't really matter. I mean, because it is. It's great. It's great. It's all really great. Uh, and it's not as if I am. I'm not. I'm not in awe of her or anything. It's just I'm really surprised by the fact that we um, we connect. We connect. We get on. We get on each other so many different fucking levels. The question is, am I, am I gonna am I gonna trust that? Am I gonna trust it? Am I gonna I'm gonna let myself go? Am I gonna jump? Monday today, I said goodbye to her this morning, I got out and did my stuff today, well, worked for an hour. It's the beginning of the week, Kevin found up, she loved to see Kevin. Life is pretty fucking intense, which is great, that's why I came. I love you. And when I wake up in the morning, I love you. And when I go to work, I still love you. And I think about you on the metro, and I think about you on the way to the shop. And I think about you until I see you again. And when I see you again, I know that I love you even more than I knew before. <laughs> She said, why didn't we celebrate Christmas? Uh, because it's April. She said, yeah, but we missed Christmas. We hadn't, we didn't know each other at Christmas, so let's have Christmas. So, yeah, we had Christmas. We, um, we got tinsel, we got decorations, we got turkey, we, we had Christmas. We got vodka, we got vodka, and when I was out getting more vodka, that's when she left me the message, which I got the next day. We drank, we danced, we ended up naked, covered in tinsel. We stood on the balcony, out on the street, there was a, um, there was a column of soldiers and trucks. We stood there on the balcony, naked, waving them off to whatever war they were going to. Later that day, I, um, I had to go to work, and uh, I was on my way home when I walked past a, uh, an internet cafe. Do you remember internet cafes? Uh, inside the internet cafe, through the glass, I could see Angela. Angela was in there. She was on one of the computers. I was going to go in, but then um, somebody was selling uh, toy dogs. You know those little toy dogs from China? Somebody was selling those, so, so I went and got one of these little toy dogs. 10 rubles, and, um, and I took it into the internet cafe with me. I sneaked up to her computer, switched on the yappy dog from China, and put it on top of her computer. I popped up to see her surprised face, but um, actually there was just some confused Russian guy sitting there. She'd, uh, she'd moved the computer. I don't know why. So I got the dog, and I sneaked up behind her again, getting it right this time. 
and I was about to throw the dog onto her lap. when I saw the email. I leaned in, got to the end of the email and said, is it true? Yes, she said. I have never been so fucking angry in my life. How can one person have the power to do that. How can one person unilaterally do that, decide, just to switch it off? How can one person have that power over you, over anybody? Fucking hell, I was angry. I stormed out of that internet cafe, I went home. She called, I would not answer. If I answered, I'd speak a few words and then throw the phone across the room. She's going back. She's going back in two weeks to Manchester. She's lost her job because we got arrested. She's going to uni. She's, I knew she was going to uni, but not in two weeks. Not in two weeks. Eventually, I calmed down. I drank some beer. I never drink beer. She came over, and, and I didn't know what to say. I didn't know what to do. We, we didn't know what to say. We didn't know what to do. She explained. She explained it very, very rationally. She has to go back. She has an interview for university. There's nothing for her now. There's, there's nothing for her now. Of course, I mean, when I think about it, I would feel the same way, except I wouldn't feel the same way. I would stay here. I would stay here for decades. So we drank, because what else could we do? And gradually, as we drank, things became easier, I guess. We will we'll work it out. We'll just, we'll find a way, yeah? We'll find a way. If she goes back in two weeks, then I'm here for another two months. Uh, I'll come back to the United Kingdom. We'll meet, we'll spend the summer together. Then university, who, know, who knows? Who knows? We're here now. And this, that's, that's all that matters, yeah? We're together. We're here now together. That's all that matters. So, we drink, we drink, we drink. We get some more. I pop out. I don't know how many. One, two, three, four. There's about four. <laughs> There's about four bottles. <laughs> There's about four bottles on the, um, on the table. Yeah, I mean, they're not all empty, okay? There's still some vodka in some of them. <laughs> and then... I don't know if it was me, or I don't know if it was her, but one of the bottles, pew, smash, smashes on the floor. And, um, and Angela did something. Yeah, Angela did something. She picked up one of the pieces of glass, and she said, can I cut you? Can you cut me? Yeah. Can I cut you? Okay. Let me think about this. I've never done it before. I'm afraid of doing it. So, yeah. Yeah, sure. Sure, you can cut me. So, I took off her top. And because I had this big hole in my hand and it didn't really look like it was going to heal. So I said, Angela, look, we should really go and see a doctor or something because I don't, I don't think this is going to get better on its own. Okay, she said. So we went to the emergency clinic. I think it was at the American Embassy or the British Embassy or something. We went to the emergency clinic and there was a doctor... And um, I, I showed him my hand, and he said, how did you do this? <laughs> I said, well, uh, I was in a bar, and we, we drank too much vodka, and I, I fell over onto a glass. And he looked at me, and he said, that's a really clean cut. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, I was, I was lucky, I guess. <laughs> We didn't have long left in, in Russia together, so, so we decided we'd have one last um, magical mystery adventure. We decided we'd get out of Moscow. Let's just, just get out of here, yeah? We spent all this time in Moscow, so let's, let's get out. Let's go and do something different. So I got my guidebook, <clears throat> and I found a place. I found a nice place we could go. Suzda. Let's go to Suzdal. Suzdal is a Russian fairy tale vision of onion domes above meadows and woods, besides a meandering river, spanned by wooden footbridges and green with reeds and lilies in summertime. It looks gorgeous, whatever the season, but especially in winter, blanketed with snow. Suzdal became the religious center of medieval Rus when the ancient tribes of Kievan Rus spread east and formed Russia as we know it. In its heyday, Suzdal had 50 churches, monasteries and cathedrals. As the town covers only seven square kilometers, you can comfortably explore it on foot. So, we got on the dog. The dog is the nickname for the train that goes to Vladimir. When we got to Vladimir, we got on a bus, a tiny, tiny little bus. And that took us to, to Suzdal. And oh my God, Suzdal. Suzdal is even more beautiful than it's described in the guidebook. It is like a postcard. It is amazing. So, we, um, yeah, we hang around the village for a little while. There's, um, there's chickens, there's cows, there's goats, there's churches. We go to a few churches and we even stumble upon a, um, there's like a little kind of craft fair. There's a tiny little tourist industry that's, um, that's here. And they sell, uh, they sell little homemade knickknacks. One of these. Original Russian clacker. And um, they had flags. They had flags as well. So me and Angela, because this is where we were made, this is where it all happens, we, we run around Suzdal. Russia! 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 Celebrating! Celebrating our time in this magical country! And after a while, we need some sustenance, we need something to, uh, we need something to drink. So, we get some of the good old vodka, and we prepare, we prepare, oh sorry, it's a bit sad, but we prepare for our, we prepare for our last supper together in Russia. We're going to have a campfire. We're going to camp out. We'll buy some sausages. We'll have a campfire. We'll sleep out. We've got a hotel. We'll just leave our stuff there. So we, uh, we start to uh, go collect some firewood to go with the sausages. sausages. But unfortunately, it's April. So the, the, the wood is wet and, and we can't light the fire. So we go into town instead, looking for a restaurant. But we can't find any restaurants either. But fortunately, we do find something. In the middle of Sustal, next to Lenin, there's a huge monument. Huge, huge, huge monument. And it's got a list of names, like a big, big, big list of names, thousands. And it's obviously looked after because it's clean and polished and shiny. And a Russian flag flies proudly over the top of this list of names. And this, this is the memorial to the unknown soldier. Thousands of them died in, just in Sustar. Did you know, I mean you probably do, but did you know that the Russians won the Second World War? Did you know that? Because the thing is, I'm from England, yeah? In England, they teach us that the British and the Americans won the Second World War. So it was a little bit strange when we came to Russia to find out that the Russians won the Second World War. 
to find out that 27 million, 27 million Russian soldiers and civilians gave their lives. They pushed Hitler back all the way from Moscow. He got to the outskirts of Moscow and those people, those Soviet citizens and soldiers pushed the fascists all the way back from Moscow to Berlin and crushed them. They stopped the fascists taking over the free world. And to mark this, to mark this proud, this proud thing in their country's history, they have these monuments everywhere and in front of the monument they have a flame, and this flame burns 24-7. It is the eternal flame for the unknown soldier. So we sat down next to the flame. And we got out our sausages. <laughs> and we barbecued our sausages. We had a bottle of vodka. We had a campfire, we had a picnic in front of the names of those men and women who sacrificed their lives to stop fascism. And we, we talked, we laughed, we cried, we ate sausages. And we held each other. We held each other because we didn't know what else to do. We held each other until the light started to come up from the horizon. And then it was time to go. It was time for us to go and get our bags and head for the airport. But Angela said something just as we were leaving. She said, let's put it out. What do you mean? The flame. Let's put it out. So I pissed as accurately as I could onto the flame. I squeezed and I squeezed and I pissed. But there's a lot of gas in Russia. <laughs> <laughs> and I gave up. <laughs> Come on. But just then, I heard something. I turned around and there was Angela she had lifted up her dress, pulled down her knickers, Whoa. tilted her pelvis forward, and she was shooting a thick fountain of piss directly onto the nozzle of the gas pipe. And like that, she put it out. Sofia, 1st of February, 2024. I've just finished a performance. Well, I think it's a performance. Uh, about us and our time together 22 years ago. 53 now, and I guess that makes you 
41, thereabouts. My wife is 44. So the age gap doesn't seem so much now. I hope you're happy. I know I've said it before, but I'm, I'm sorry about what happened after when we met each other back at home. I think the last time you wrote to me was about 10 years ago and, um, and you told me that you had, you had a son and that you were getting married. And yeah, I have a son too. He's eight and I'm very happy. Um, I always said that I'd send you the tapes, so I'm going to put this one in with all of the tapes and um, yeah, I, um, I hope you like them. It, it, would be, it would be nice if we, if we did see each other again. Or maybe that's a really bad idea. <laughs> uh, anyway, if we did, I, I always thought it would be a good idea if we could do, I don't know, go for a coffee, go for a walk, take our kids to a playground. Yeah, something really ordinary. Maybe we could get together and do something really ordinary. We never did that. Maybe we were afraid of doing it. So maybe we should try that. 